Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Barrett Geyer. I'm the marketing manager here at Synergist Engineering Design Solutions, and I wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to join our webcast this morning. Our presenter this morning is going to be Joe Corson. Uh, Joe has been a Synergist Applications Consultant since 2015, and he has over 15 years of experience in the manufacturing industry. Before joining Synergist, Joe worked as a mechanical designer at a large manufacturing company using Vault, Inventor, and AutoCAD. He then became a Vault administrator and streamlined Vault's usage and procedure across the entire company. Here at Synergist, Joe is one of our applications consultants um, with an expertise focus on data management and Autodesk Vault. Typically, you'll find him performing Vault implementations for our customers, upgrades, and, uh, and training for our customers as well. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Joe. Good morning, everybody. So like Barrett said, I'm Joe Corson, and today we're going to be doing a presentation on some advantages of using Vault. So first off, let's uh, kick it off to the first slide. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a slide, and then I'm going to go out into the actual software and show you, so you're not just sitting here looking at um, slides. So what we have first, for the CAD users, for your people using Inventor and AutoCAD, using the vault you're going to have some great features with the searching the history the parent-child relationships and for any of you who are not using vault any files that have a relationship whether it's a part assembly drawing or a drawing with xrefs you're, you're aware that in windows explorer if you move a file or rename a file those relationships get lost with vault those relationships will stay and um we won't have to worry about having to fix any references when you open up your inventor drawings or your assemblies. Same thing with your AutoCAD files. With Vault, we get some awesome capabilities with reusing data. So instead of creating a new spring or a new bolt washer every time for every, for every project, we're able to reuse the data and actually see where this data is being used so you can see where one bolt is being used in a hundred different assemblies and you also have the ability to copy entire projects so if you have a project a that is very similar to a project b that you're going to be starting you don't have to sit there and start from scratch to every single model every single assembly every single drawing anymore we have the copy design tool inside of vault that will allow you to copy an entire project you can start at the top level drawing and grab everything below it. You can also bring in all the, the documentation that goes along with that project and duplicate that into another area of the vault. Doing this saves you time because now you already have your base parts, your drawings, your assemblies, all your documentation. You just go in there and then you modify everything and your designs are almost done by the time you, right when you start. And then we have some integrations. So Autodesk Vault works with a ton of different products. You have obviously all of your Autodesk products. We have some Microsoft products that it'll link with. And we have other, other products that are outside of Autodesk. So SolidWorks, Creo, MicroStation. Let me switch to the next slide here. And these are all of the, the products at this time that I created this slide that were available for communicating with the vault. So as you can see, it's quite the lengthy list and they're constantly adding new add-ins for other applications. So if you are a, a heavy SolidWorks um, company, you can actually implement vault and have a working check-in, check-out process. Um, same thing with Creo and there's other CAD softwares out there. So what I'm going to start with is, let's go back. So we're going to go and start with the searching inside of the vault. So let's close out of here and pull up the vault. So inside of the vault, we have three different ways to do searches. We can do a basic search. We can do an advanced search. And then we can even go in and critique those searches even more with the query builder. So in here, we have our basic search. I'm in the Project Explorer folder. So that's going to search all of my projects, all of my folder structure. And in here, I'm just going to do a search for redesign. So 
what this search is searching for is searching for all the files name all the file names inside of the vault it's also searching all the property the metadata of the files so when you have a drawing that has a title block in it you can actually map that information from the title block into the vault so there are look at this one here so this information over here is actually information that came from the title block. When I checked it into the vault, this information came over with it. So now not only can I search by file name, which you can do that in Windows Explorer, you can now search for all of the property data in here. Now we also have a feature called search file content. So this will search um, what we call dumb text inside of AutoCAD files, which is just line text, not properties, not attributes, but just text inside of AutoCAD files. So if you had a note inside of the AutoCAD file, you'd be able to do a search, searching the file content, and you'd be able to find it. The searching file content also works with Word, Excel, and emails. So if you put all of that information in your vault, you can do a search for an email address or an address, something that's inside of your Excel documents and you will be able to find that. So this is your basic search. It searches file names, properties, and the metadata inside of the file. Now, if we want to get a little more refined of a search, we can come into the advanced searching capabilities and search just specific property information that I want. Maybe I don't want to search in the basic search and find um, all this information because we could have redesign in file names, different properties, but I want to come into the project property and I want to do a search for my main site. So now all the files that are part of my main site project are showing up here. This is a very nice feature. We can also narrow these searches down by stacking the criteria. So we can start with project and then we can go by the person who checked it in. And we can say also what files are released, which files are still being worked on. We can stack these um, the search criteria so that everything gives a narrow search instead of finding hundreds of thousands of files, we can narrow it down to just a few. Another search that I always like to run and one that's always helpful for users is checked out by. So with the vault, when you're working on something, you actually check it out and you own it. So when you go home for the weekend, you come back on Monday morning and you don't remember what you're what you were working on. You can run a search and find all the files that you currently have checked out and see what you're working on. So as you can see here, by these files being blue, that means I have nine files checked out that I'm working on. This is a nice way to keep track of this is what I'm working on. You have the file checked out. It's not like it's just on a network drive where you saved it, you closed it. You leave it checked out. If you have it checked out, you can always see what files am I working on. Very nice feature here is now I can save this. So now no matter where I'm at in the vault, I can just automatically run my search and I have my list of files here. So now let's go back to the, so next we're going to go over history. So right here we have a file. Now the way the vault works is it saves every single change of these files so that you can see it from the day that you brought it into the vault until current day and you can see every single change that this file has gone through. So we can see here on 11-7-2017 was the initial time it was brought into the vault and then every time a change was made we can see who made the change, we can see when that change was made and we can see what the comment is. So anytime a change is made to a file, whether it's a property edit or it's a physical, open it up, make a change and check it in, there's always going to be this information here to see, okay, 
on released revision A, it was from the administrator on this day. We can see released revision B, and we are currently working on Rev C. So the history of the file will stay with it. There are options to purge out, but by default, all of your versions are going to stay from the day that you implement the file into the vault until current day. Okay, so you don't have to worry about losing history, and we can always go back. So if something happens on Rev C that we realize that your company realizes, hey, Rev C is no longer going to happen. We need to go back to Rev B. We can always go back. So if we just do a quick rollback here, we can now see that this is now Rev B. We have rolled it back, brought it back from Rev C back to Rev B. And what's very nice is at any point in time, if I need to see what was being done, how the drawing looked at Rev A, I can just right click on Rev A and say open. At this point, it'll open it up in auto back at revision A. All right. So now, next was parent-child relationships. So if we go to this assembly here, this inventor assembly, and I go to my uses tab, I can see all the components that this assembly uses. So these are all the children of this assembly. And if I go to the where used, I can see here where this assembly is being used. So this is a massive feature. If you're gonna be making a change to a common component, you come to the where used tab and you can see, okay, if I make a change to this assembly, it's going to be affecting this assembly, this assembly, and also this assembly directly. But then there's also these parents here. So you'd really be able to see where it's being used, what it's using, so that when you're going to make a change, you have all that information you need to say, okay, look, this is going to work for some of the files, but not work for others. All right. Now, if we go to the Uses tab. Now, earlier I mentioned about moving. When you move a file inside of Inventor or inside of Windows Explorer, those references will be broken. So now I have this component here of this assembly, which is actually right here. Now I can take this and we can see that it's being used by that assembly. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it right into my designs folder here. Now what it's doing is it's actually finding all the references and fixing all the references. So the next time I go to use that file, we can see here it's still referencing the assembly. And if I go to the assembly, I look at the uses tab. Here's my component. Vault has fixed the relationship. So now next time I go and open it up inside of Inventor, there will not be a resolved dialog box, so you don't have to fix any relationships. And the same thing with renaming. If you would just right-click on a file inside of Windows Explorer and rename, you're going to break the references. Vault uses a rename wizard that's actually going to keep those relationships. It's going to find them in this related files here. And then when I go and rename it, I'm just going to leave the prefix of new. When I go and rename it, Vault is fixing the relationships right now so that now I can see that it is renamed and the part number has been updated. So now my file is new SMC and I can see that the relationships are still there. Here's my assembly. If I go back to my assembly and I look at my uses tab here, I can still see that relationship is here. So the renaming and moving, that issue of doing that in Windows Explorer using the vault is no longer here. That is a massive feature for people who use big assemblies in, in Inventor um, and XREFs inside of AutoCAD. This will fix those references. You no longer have to worry about that. Now, I mentioned the integrations. If I go to Inventor, 
Inventor, once you install Vault, will now have a Vault ribbon. So you can see here, I have access to the Vault, and I have a whole lot of options here now. From right inside of Inventor, I don't have to download or open from the Vault. I can actually, inside of Inventor, just say Open. And it's going to open up a window inside of the Inventor as if I was looking into the Vault. So now I can go into my designs folder. Uh, let's go mechanical robot welding arm assemblies. And here's all my assemblies that are inside of the vault. Now, the way the vault works is you have your server side and you have your client side. Most of you guys will be working on the client side. I see that there's, I think, one person that's a part of the IT department. They would be working on the server side. The, the vault actually keeps all the files on the server until you're ready to work on them. Once you're ready to work on them, it downloads the files from the server onto your C drive so you're working on them locally. So right now, if I open this, I'm going to open up a... If I open this part, it is now going to download it for me, put it onto my C drive, so now I'm working locally. Whereas if you're working off of a network drive, you have to be connected into the network, where now I can download it, I can download my entire project, I can go home with my laptop and continue working with no network access at all. So I have my component here. I've checked it out. I have downloaded it. I'm going to throw a fillet on here. Now that I've put my fillet on here, I'm going to save it. When I'm saving it, I'm still just hitting the, the save disk, control S or uh, file save. And then what I want to do is I'm done working on it. I can now check it back into the vault leave my little comment in here so now if we go back into the vault here and we go to parts let me make sure to see what's in part I grabbed 200-105 200-105, here it is. On my history tab here, I can now see that I added fillets to my corner. And now the file's back in the vault. Anyone else can come in and see my changes. They can start making changes of their own. And they can continue working on these files. Now, everyone works from a common file store. So everyone, when you look at the vault, you're looking at the files that everyone else has seen. If you're working on a file, no one else can work on it, but they can still see it. So now, if I go to this, this assembly here, I mentioned uh, copy design. So here, we have a fairly small assembly, just these five components. But if this, comp if this assembly is going to be very similar to a new project I'm working on, I can take this and say copy design. Copy branch. I'm going to copy all of it right into a webinar folder. And I'm going to give it a new name. Oh, popped up on a different screen. Sorry about that. There it is. I'm going to change SMC to SYS replace all and now you can see the file names have all changed and I'm going to close this so now I have my new file names I have my new locations and I'm going to execute my copy so now the copy process is happening on the server the files are getting copied put into the new location they're getting renamed and I have my green check marks so that is done and if I go to 
my vault and I refresh, we'll see the webinar folder. And here's all of my, my part, my folder structure all the way down into my assembly and my other components. Now, if these parts and draw, if these parts and assembly had drawings, those drawings would come along with it. So you would have all of your parts, all of your drawings, all of your assemblies, all in one spot, all at one time. So we don't have to worry about bringing over the parts and assemblies and then still having to redo the drawings. Everything comes with it and all the relationships stay the same. So if we look at the uses tab here, we can see I have all of my new components as my children of this file. So now back into Inventor. I'm going to create a new part. Popped up on a different screen. Sorry about that. Okay. No, I'm just going to create a tar something quick. Now, when creating new parts, Vault gives you the access of file naming schemes. So you're not just going to sit there and give it a part number. You can just go in and type in, you know, part one, spring, bolt, nut, screw, whatever you want. We can actually set numbering schemes so that we can enforce what we need to so that everything is valid. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving it a P-1234 number, and this is going to pull up a auto-generated sequence for every file that has a P-1234 number. And I say OK, and we see here this is P-1234, 160,001.ipt. So I'm just going to put this right into the designs folder. I'm done working on it, and if I go back to my vault tab here, and I can check it in. If I go back to my vault, my designs folder, here is my new file. It's in the vault. It's now on the server. Everyone can use it. They can come in and modify it, work on it if they need to. So the integration between vault and inventor is, as you see, very fluid. You can check in, check out, work on files right there. We also have the same feature inside of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and um, Office. I just had a, uh, thinking everything's okay. My screen just blinked. Um, Barrett, can you still hear me? All right, I'm gonna. You're hold good, it up. Joe. Okay. All right. My my go to meeting thing, my go to webinar thing just blinked and another window went away. Um, all right. So inside of Word, we have the same integration inside of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. So if you need to put in docs, emails, anything that's corresponding to a project, we can check that right into the vault. We can check files in and out just like we would inside of Inventor. Let's go back to my PowerPoint presentation here. So that's the, the major features that I see for CAD users the integrations. If anyone has any questions, you can type it into the chat as I go along, or if I see it when I'm going through, uh, I'll try and answer it at that time or at the end. And if we have no time at the end, so I'm seeing I'm mumbling on a bit, um, we'll make sure that we reach out one-on-one -on -one so that all the questions can get answered. So that's for the hey, CAD. Jim. Yep. Can I, can I jump in real quick? So we did have um, we had multiple questions about um, file numbers um, when you are revising either lower tier files or copies of files. Can you just speak to that about the numbering system and 
Um, is it flexible? Can people adjust those numbering schemes uh, and create new new file numbers for design copies? Oh, so yes. So the flexibility of Vault when it comes to numbering schemes is very flexible. We can create very simple numbering schemes or we can make very difficult, or not difficult, but very elaborate numbering schemes. So if I go in here, we can create a new one and we have options here for generated sequences, fixed text, free text. We can create lists. So when you're doing your your copy design, instead of just leaving it copy of like I did and changing some words, we can actually use these numbering schemes. If you are looking for just an auto generated sequence with a prefix or a suffix, we can create that. If you're looking for a drop down where they have to use a specific list of information to create their numbering scheme, we can create that. If you're looking for something of a max of 10 characters that they fill in, we can create that. The flexibility of the numbering schemes inside a vault is very flexible. If you have any more questions, I will definitely try and address them um, if that works. So I will, I am seeing questions, but they're very small on my screen. I can't really read them. You want me to just run through them real quick, Joe? We do have a few. Um, yeah. Um, so real quick, um, two questions about Adobe PDFs and Office 365 documents and Vault's ability to manage those files. Okay. So the PDFs, they are any file inside of the Vault. We can check them into the Vault. They can be locked in the Vault so people can view them, print them run them through workflows, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. They can be checked out to be modified. If you have Adobe Pro where you can modify them, you can check them out, make your changes, check them back in. The All the files that can go into the vault can be modified and worked on just as if they were an inventor file. The check-in, check-out capabilities inside of here, as you see, I have a test PDF right here where I created a test PDF. So they can reside in the vault. We can check them out. I don't have Adobe Pro, so I can't make any changes to it. But I can check it out, make changes to it, check it back into the vault. Um, we can do fancy things with having them auto get being auto-created during workflows when they get released. We can have them put into a different location, give it different file names. So there is some flexibility with PDFs. Um, Office 365, the the integration is there depending on what version you have. Uh, I know Autodesk is trying to keep up to date with the latest and greatest. So yes, the check-in, check-out capabilities with Office 365 should be there for you guys, whoever is using it. Thanks, Joe. Um, one additional question that just came in. Uh, when you copy a project or a design, are the reused parts in the design release parts, or are they new in work copies? So it all depends on how you're reusing the files. So if you're copying an assembly and to make copies of five files and reuse five files, those files that you're reusing are going to stay in the same state that they're in. So if they are released or if they are work in progress, they will stay in that state that they're in. So nothing's going to change with the files you're reusing. Any of the new files that you're creating copies of will go into a work in progress state out of the box. Uh, we can customize that to a different state if you need it. But when you do a copy, it's going to, the files that you reuse are going to stay where they are, how they are. And the new files that you create are going to be put into most likely a work in progress state that you can just check it out, make changes to it, and continue working on. Thanks, Joe. Uh, and great questions by the audience for everyone that's on the call. Feel free to keep those questions coming in. If we can address them live, we will do that. And if we're not able to, uh, we will follow up with everybody individually and make sure that uh, that your questions get answered. Thanks, Joe. Back to you. Okay. So let's go back into the slide here. Um, let's switch this. I wish I could set that default. So 
we've talked about CAD users, but you also have non-CAD users that are inside of your, your company. You have sales, you have quality, you have management who want to see the vault. Well, we can give them access through what is called the vault office client or also the vault web client. The office client is a different paid for um, license, but the vault web client with vault, if you have vault professional, the web client comes free where people can just pull up uh, the internet browser, path out to the vault web client, log in, and they can see the files. They can't make any changes to them, but they can see them, they can print them, they can redline them and email them, but they can't make any changes. So we do have some functionality that is not for just CAD users. So we normally call these office users. Um, you can view and print like I mentioned. You have all the search capabilities inside of the office client and the web client. So you can do your basic searches, you can do your advanced searches. Um, I didn't talk about ECOs yet, but through the Vault Office Client, you can insert yourself into the ECO process so you can make your, your notes on, okay, this needs to be changed for this customer, or hey, the change you made isn't right, so let's push it back through the ECO process. And with the Office, um, office Client, you can check in and check out non-CAD files. So anything that needs to be, any documentation that needs to be with the project, you can go in and check in your Word documents, your PDFs, your emails, all of your supporting documentation can be checked in with using the Vault Office client. And like I showed the history on the, the uh, inventor files, the history of the Office documents will stay there. The history of all files will always stay there unless if they're purged out. So CAD users can be a portion of your, your Vault. So we're going to jump into IT. Now, I know I think we have one person in here, so I'll try and uh, not bore everyone else. So for the IT department, we don't have to worry about your loss of data. We run a scheduled backup. Um, we set that up. We configure it to run nightly, so your vault gets backed up nightly. So if something happens during the day, your vault crashes, your server dies, well, we have a backup and we you know, highly recommend taking that back up and then moving it off-site so that it's not sitting on the same server. So if something would happen on, let's just say, a Tuesday at noon, the backup from Monday at midnight, you can take that backup, get in touch with us, and we can restore it to another vault and just have you guys up and running in minimal time instead of having to rebuild a, a server and get everything piecemealed back together. We can also give permissions to individual users or groups of users. Um, you have your domain group set up. We can import them right into the vault and give them permissions, give all the users permissions at once, or we can bring in individual users. Now with Vault Basic and Work Group, you have to individually bring in users. Vault Basic, you can only create Vault users, but Work Group and Pro, you can import their domain credentials. So if they have domain access, they can have Vault access. With Vault Basic, they don't have to have a domain account. They can just use a Vault account. Um, we have the capability of integrating with ERP systems. So if you want to get your ERP system linked into the Vault, so when a file gets released, your ERP system gets notified, or if a bill of materials changes in the Vault, your ERP system gets notified. If your ERP uh, bill of materials gets updated, we can have that pull back down to the vault and update the vault. So we can create a push-pull integration with an ERP system so that it's one less thing of people inputting data into the CAD files, putting it into the vault, and then going into the ERP system and putting it together. The vault brings all of that together. The data you put into your, your CAD files goes into the vault. From the vault, it then gets pushed to your ERP system. So you enter it once, not three times, less chance of spelling errors or messing something up on one of the um, uh, times you have to put it in there. Uh, I see a question from Brian Dean about the backup, and it looks... so. I see the question is, uh, is the backup incremental or full every night? 
So we can do either with the backups. We can do a full backup every night, or we can do a full backup on the weekend and an incremental throughout. I personally prefer doing a full backup nightly. If your vault is small enough and your server is fast enough that we can get a backup completed in an overnight, that's what I prefer to do. Um, depending on your vault size, it could be, you know, it could take 10 minutes to back up your vault, or I've seen vaults that take 16 hours. So it all depends on how large your vault is, how fast your server is. Um, but most of the time we try and do a backup nightly, uh, but we can do a full backup on the weekend and a incremental Monday through Friday. And so I don't know how to say that question has been answered. But uh, so we can also do migrations from existing or other data management systems. So I know there are some custom companies here in this webinar that are not using Vault, but they are using something else. We can actually take the information, all the metadata from your existing database and import that into the Vault with your files. So we keep the history, we keep all the metadata, we keep all the revision, we keep all of the information. So you're not going from what you have to a brand new system starting at scratch. You will have all the information that came from the old system into the vault. So here's just a quick example of your, your nightly vault backup, your daily vault backup. This would be a full backup. We have the information here to cycle backups. That's normally what we try and do where we have a backup in the A folder and a B folder. So you have two nights of backups on hand at all times. So it'll create a backup Monday night, create a new one Tuesday night, and then it'll delete Mondays to create Wednesday and so on. We can see here that we can import the information from your domain. We have um, all of your user management here, and we can export from the vault if we wanted to do a manual ERP integration, we can take this ERP, we can take this bill of materials dump out of Vault and manually have you guys import it into your, your ERP system. Okay. So next we have features for management. So we have your approval processes. So currently in your company, it might be a manual. I print my page out, walk it over to my, my manager or my coworker, and I say, hey, can you check this? Well, with Vault, we can do that inside of the Vault. So while you're doing the work, you're doing it in a work in progress state. Once you're done doing it, you move it to a check state, and you say, hey, there's a file for you to check. They go into the Vault, they look at it. If it's good, they approve it. If it's not, they can push it. Not only does this keep everything digital, you're not wasting any more paper, but now you're keeping a trail of, okay, hey, this was approved, this was rejected, we made more changes, so it's keeping all the history of it. We can also do engineering change orders, which gives you a more broader um, engineering change process, which it's not just a couple people checking things. You can actually import your entire company into the vault inside of this ECO process. So you can have your designers doing the work. You can have quality checking the work. You can have managing management approving it. And then you can have sales closing it so everyone is inside of the loop when something is changing so that everyone knows, hey, don't sell this old part. We're making it into a new part. We also have securities. So we have all the securities for each individual user or group. We can give read, write, delete access there. We also have folder level permissions. So a person might have access to the vault with their account, but then we can go into the folders and say, you know what, this group of people does not have access here. So let me pull up the vault again. So we have the, the users. Go to my global settings here. We have some groups that I've created here, and we can import domain groups, and we have all of our users. So we can see here, these are all of the Synergist employees that have a vault access. So we can import them right into the vault, 
and um, give them access here. Now you can see here we have options of enabled and disabled here. With Vault, you can never delete somebody. So once they are, once they leave or get pushed to a different position where they no longer have access, you just disable their account. The history for all the files that they've made changes to stays because their account is still there. Now, each individual user or group can have read, write, delete access for the entire vault. And then with the folders, just like Windows Explorer, we have folder level securities. Uh-oh, I lost it. Oh, it's over here on the other screen. Let me bring that over. So we can set individual securities for the users and groups inside of each folder. And then we can take it one step farther and actually go into individual files and create securities on individual files. So if you have a government group that wants to have a folder in the vault but no one else has access to their files, we can have a government folder in here and have everyone segregated so that the government group can see everything but everyone else can't see the government stuff. We can set up those controls inside of the files, inside of the folders by the users. And then I've been mentioning the workflow. So if I go to my assembly here, oh, my drawing, we can see these files here are, this one's in a release state, this one's in a work in progress state. So I can see here, it was in a work in progress state, it was a review state, and then it was released. Now I'm logged into the vault as the administrator making all these changes. And you can see who did it, when they did it, and what state it's going into. These transitions can be completely customized for your vault. We can also create individual workflows for individual groups inside of your, your company. Or if a different file type is going to have a different life cycle. We can create different life cycles for individual um, files, file types, groups of people. Out of the box, we have some that come with the vault. So we have these that are already here. And we can also create our own. So long lead time process with change order. We have different ones here. And if I needed to, we can come in and create our own. We have a lot of people like the work in progress, review, release. But then we also have prototype development and production states. So we can add whatever we want. And then on each of those states, let me go to the security tab here, we can set individual permissions on each of the states. So even though sales has 100% read access to the entire vault, well, if a file is being worked on and it's in a work in progress state, maybe you don't want them seeing it, so they're not still selling an old version. So when it's in a work in progress state, maybe only engineering has access to it. And then when it gets to a review state, then maybe your sales team, your um, quality department, they can then see it there. So we can set individual securities on individual states. And then we can also come in and say, when the file is in a work in progress state, who's able to push it to a review state? So then we can even narrow it down. So maybe a person has to look at it. So if you need it to go through quality, you have your engineering department work on it, then it has to go through quality. So we would say engineering can go from work in progress to for review. And then from for review to pre-release, we would then say someone in quality has to touch it here. So we can go in and say, look, this person has to touch it. This person has to touch it. And then we look back through the history and we can see every single time someone has touched the file, approved it, rejected it, or made changes to it. So that's the securities. Now for management, there's a lot of times that they're going to want to see a report of what files are. Well, with the searching capabilities inside of Vault, we can bring up a create a search. I'm going to do a very generic one just so I can bring up some files. And let's run this search and we see we have 17 files that are currently 
in a workflow. So I'm going to run a report on this. And now we get little, we get an exportable, a printable, a viewable report on what's being worked on. So we have one file that's in a review state. We have six that are released and we have nine that are still currently being worked on. So instead of having a management person come up and say, okay, what are you working on? How is this project going? Where are we stuck on? We can take a look right at a report and say, okay, why are these files still at a work in progress state for the last six months? We need to be getting in on this and you know keep going with it. So we can see what the hang up is, who's being, who's doing what work. So the reporting function in Vault is here. And we can create custom reports. There are out of the box 15 different reports to run, different templates. So you can see bar charts, uh, you can see graphs, whatever you're looking for. There's most likely one already there, but you can customize it. If you don't want it to say Autodesk or any of this information up here, if you have the capabilities of making changes to the template files, then you can create your own custom reports. Now, compliance standards, so with the, let me close this, go back into my, my file here. So there's a lot of times where I've seen customers where they, they don't have the information filled out that they need, files are getting released with, with no information in title blocks. We can actually set compliance standards so that files have to have specific information filled out before they can be released. So all this property information on the right here, we can say, look, we need to have a project, we need to have a stock number, we need to have a title before this file can be released. And that's something a man, a, an administrator can set up so that hey, these files have to have this information, which will then help us stay compliant with all of our needs and keep our searching capabilities and all of our files up to date. And let's go back into here. So internal and external collaboration. With the vault, you can collaborate with your entire company. Anyone who has access to your vault has a user account. They can collaborate with everything from design, from project start to project finish, whether it's just as a engineer or a checker approver or a management everyone inside of the company can now be a part of your process. Or if you don't want them to, you just bring them in at the end. And you can also do collaboration through your A360 account. Um, you can actually publish files out to your, out of your network. You can give people VPN access from outside of your building into your company and they can access the vault that way. As long as they're on your network, they can access the vault. So for people out on job sites, if they have a laptop and they need to see a drawing, well, they can just VPN in, pop up the vault, look for the drawing, and they can see the drawing there. Um, we can also do other collaborations with other programs. Like I mentioned, ERP systems. We can also incorporate a fusion lifecycle um, type of program so that your your workflows go internal and external to you know, suppliers and everybody so that everyone can collaborate internally and externally of your company. And that is it. I've got I, seven minutes ahead of schedule, so I think I did pretty good. Um, if there are any other questions, we can ask them now. Um, Garrett, if you can see any more yeah, I haven't seen any new ones come in at this point. Okay. Oh, hey, there we go. That's how you do it. Um, so, okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, from Elton Clark, I see when migrating from a non-PDM system, can files be validated for field before being filled for fields being filled in? So yes, we have a software that we can look at all the metadata of the files 
And when it's being checked into the vault, we can use that metadata for putting in it specific categories, specific workflows, specific folder structures. So we can completely reorganize your folder structure by the data that is inside of your, your file if you're just coming straight from a network location. Um, Sure. So the copy design, yeah, let me pull that up real quick. So let's just go to, we'll just go to the same one here. So I did brush over this very quickly before just to show quickly, but when we do, so I'm just going to say uh, copy branch in here. So here's where we have the options. We can copy to different locations. We can actually say, you know what, this component here is going to be replaced with a different component in a different project. So we can replace that information right here. Now, I'm going to say probably about 95% of the time when you do a replace from here, when you open up the assembly, the relationships inside of the assembly aren't going to be there. The constraints aren't going to be there if you're going from different geometry, but there is a chance that the geometry will match up. And we have the option to exclude, so we can just say, you know what, I don't even want that. We have the option to just say reuse, so this file will stay a shared component. And so that's the different information, the different processes, the different actions that we can do. Now we can use any of the numbering schemes that I have. So if I show this one here, so I can say, um, you know, we can set different prefixes. We can change what numbering scheme to use. So we can now push it to a demo scheme here. So I can change, you know, what machine it's coming from my free text. Now, unfortunately, until I start the, the, the actual copy, I won't know what these last six digits are because Vault is going to pick them as soon as I say go and I say execute the copy. And then you'll see what you know, the last six digits are. But you can set up multiple numbering schemes. You can have rules set up in here so that different property information gets cleared out. So if you have a, a project that you're working on and you want to clear out all the, the title block data, you can set up a rule so when it does the copy, all the I properties from the, the parts assemblies and IDWs get wiped out. Um, all of the attributes from AutoCAD get wiped out. So you can set up different rules to do different functions inside of the copy process. So the next time you open it, you're already one more step ahead. Um, Delilah, I hope that helped. Um, if you would like more information, we can do uh, like a lunch and learn or have another conversation after this or uh, schedule another conversation at another time. And so Noah, uh, so uh, I'll jump on the Brian's question quick. So those rules currently are on each individual machine. They're not global yet. It is something that Autodesk is working on, but when you create the, the, the rule on one machine, it creates an XML that you can actually just copy and paste it onto the other machines into the right location, and then everyone would have it. Um, I know a lot of customers that create these rules, they use their SCCM software to push that XML out to where it needs to be. Uh, so Noah, your ERP, when you push a part change from ERP, what happens in Inventor? Does it create new parts? So um, the ERP integration with the vault can be customized to do, you know, however your workflow is. Now having it create a new part in Inventor, I don't know if it's going to be able to go that far, but we can create new, um, what they're called items inside of the vault so that you would have your item, you would create your part in Inventor, and then you would assign it to that item. So that's something that's possibility, a possible possibility there. 
Um, but if you're looking for an integration with an ERP system, I would definitely say reach out to your contract manager and we can definitely take a look at your ERP system and see what your what your uh, XML data comes out of it, what it needs, and we can take a look at possibly creating that integration. And I thank you guys for joining us.